Riding through my city with that daddy bag. Thank you, Bentley. Boom. Hi, how you doing? My name is Bentley Coop. They call me Coop or Bentley, whatever. This is DoorDash Diaries T3D. This is the one-stop shop for tips, tricks, and strategies to help you dominate with DoorDash. When you sign up for DoorDash, it can kind of be overwhelming coming into it, seeing as how there is no type of initial training. And with so many different videos on YouTube, how do you know which one to really watch, right? You're just trying to get some basic information to have an assumption of what needs to be done and how it needs to be done before you actually start to do it. So in this video, I'm just gonna walk you through the very basics of what we do here. I'm talking about accepting an order, assessing an order, dropping it off from the very beginning. It's currently 7.54 right now. I do not have a scheduled dash. But as I look at the screen, all right, as I look at my area, my market, okay, so my market is gonna be Charlotte, North Carolina and all of the surrounding cities. Your market could include numerous cities or zones, okay? So your market is the general area that you work in and the zone is the city or part of the city that you work in because your zone could be like the west side of Charlotte or it could be like the entire city of Raleigh. Probably confusing, but we'll just look at the screen. So the blue dot is where I am currently, all right? As long as it is red, you can start to dash now and you will see the sign at the bottom that says dash now. If the area is gray, they don't need dashes in that area. You cannot work in that area. If it is red, depending on what color, will depend on the intensity of the orders that are actually there. So the area that I want to work in is downtown Charlotte, and it's currently saying that it is super busy, so I can dash right now. I'm gonna hit dash now. It's gonna bring up a separate screen, which is gonna ask me, how long do I wanna work? So again, it's currently 7.56 right now. I am gonna take this all the way up until 10 a.m. So I hit 10 a.m. It's gonna take me to a separate screen where it's gonna ask me to confirm a little bit of information before I start. Boom, I have gas, my phone is charged, or I have a charger. Your red card, you don't need it. I'm gonna say that just one more time. We're just gonna mark that you have your red card, whether you have it or not, all right? Hot bag and space blanket. I don't even think they give out space blankets anymore, but you definitely should have your hot bag. And then from there, we're gonna hit start your dash. The very first screen that comes up is gonna show you where you are, okay? You can see that from the blue dot. And then the two flames inside of the circle are the hot spots. The one that is red with the circle, white flame, is going to be the closest one to me and the one that is labeled down at the bottom. So we can see that this is Cracker Barrel and this is 2.3 miles away. If I hit the directions button from here, it's gonna take me to that hot spot. There is a outline of a square at the bottom right hand side. If you hit that, it will actually zoom out and allow you to see all of the hot spots that are in your current zone. If you want to go to another hotspot, but don't know how to get there, you could select it, all right? So I changed my hotspot. I changed the one that I wanna to go to. And as we can see, when we do that, I'm definitely not going to Red Ardana. Boom, we see when you select the other hotspot, by tapping it, the color changes of it, down at the bottom, the name of the restaurant and how far it is away changes. And from there, you can hit the directions button and it will take you directly to that hot spot. All right, so we got our first order. We can clearly see the name of the restaurant. This is Snooze AM Eatery, right? We can look down towards the bottom left and we can see the number of items. Right beside it is gonna be the total miles that you have to drive for this order. So this is gonna be the total number of miles from your current location to the restaurant and then from the restaurant to the customer. And if we look up towards the top of the screen, we can see generally where these three locations are. So the blue dot is going to be you, the one that looks like Pac-Man eating um, or actually a merchant is going to be the restaurant. So that's the merchant icon. And then of course you can tell what the house icon is. If you get out of the app, so if you hit the button that brings you back to the main screen, on your phone, you should have a widget that pops up with the DoorDash icon. 
if you hit this icon, this will tell you the drop off address that you are going to. So you can kind of see the general direction, but you are not gonna have enough time to copy the address from the widget to Google Maps to see exactly where it is before you accept the order. You only have about 60 seconds to accept the order. So while this widget is super helpful after you've accepted the order, it's not really going to help you before you accept the order. As we go back to the order, we can see the time that they expect for the order to be delivered and we can see the total payout of this order. Down right below that, it says that this includes the DoorDash pay and the customer tip. Um, and it also says that the total may be higher. So after assessing all of these things that I just went over with you, if you want to accept the order, you can hit the accept button. If not, you can hit the decline button in the top right hand corner. There is no penalty for declining orders no penalty for declining orders. So don't feel pressured to accept an order. Number one, if you are not fully aware of everything that it's asking you to do. And number two, if you just feel uncomfortable in any way, shape or form. I had to go get my coffee. Sorry about that. All right. So once you accept the order, again, it's gonna show you the blue dot. So where you are currently, and then it's gonna show you the merchant. If you look up towards the top right, you're gonna see two different numbers. Almost, they almost got into a car accident. Two different numbers. All right, so the one on the left is gonna be what you're about to get paid for this particular pickup. The one on the far right is gonna be what your total is for this dash so far. So you'll always have that. The only time that you won't be able to see that is when you mark it to go to the restaurant and when you're about to drop off. But side note, don't worry about that. All right. We look down towards the bottom again we can see the name of the restaurant that we are going to we can see the physical address of this restaurant if we look right below that we're going to see two different options one is going to say directions one is going to have a little phone icon if you tap the directions it's going to open up whatever default map that you have inside of the app and it's going to start to direct you towards the restaurant the phone icon is to call the restaurant. So you get into a situation where maybe the restaurant is inside of a strip mall or maybe a regular mall and you're just having troubles finding it. Maybe they are a food truck. Maybe they are some type of food cart. And there again, you're just having troubles locating them. You can hit this phone icon, would call the restaurant so that you could get more information about your current delivery. Boom. If you swipe up, you will have even more information. It's gonna give you the customer's name and it's gonna allow you to communicate with them via call or text. So you will see those icons. And then right below that, you're going to see the actual order. So you'll be able to see the total, the number of items and physically what they ordered. Right now, I'm not at the restaurant. So as we look at the screen, the bottom says slide for arrival. It is black. It is going to stay black until I get closer to the restaurant. I'm, I'm literally about two, three blocks away from the restaurant. If I try to swipe it now, it's gonna ask me, have I arrived at the restaurant? I could say yes, there's some type of issue with my phone, some type of issue with the GPS, but this is a fail safe, just to make sure that it's not in your pocket or you're not just like butt dialing people or something. You can tell I'm an OG, right? Cause in the older versions, it used to turn red, but apparently it doesn't anymore. I'm currently at the restaurant right now. I'm gonna slide. Once I slide that I have arrived, again, the screen is gonna change. The name of the customer is gonna get bigger in the top left-hand corner. You're gonna see a couple other sections. Uh, one is gonna have the order number. You are not going to need this. The only restaurant that you may need this at is McDonald's. But other than that, you won't have to use this number or know this number at any other time right below that it's going to give you the items you can tap that there again just to see exactly what they order or you can leave it alone <laughs> uh, right below that again is going to confirm the name of the restaurant and going to give you the icon to be able to communicate directly with them and if for whatever reason there is some type of long wait then you can select that option and tell them the reason that you think that there's a long wait okay so that noise means that i'm getting another order <laughs> this is a stacked order this is going to be in part two of the video so make sure you stick around for that but
Let's go get this order. Hey, how you doing? Good. I got a door dad. Awesome. Thank you. You too. So you see, we just walk into the restaurant. I gave him the name of the customer. Told him I'm a dasher. I'm with DoorDash. I have a DoorDash order. However you want to say it. I normally show them the phone with the name just because the name is so big. There's no type of discrepancy or anything like that. Some restaurants may require that you show the phone before you actually get the order. No big deal with that as far as that's concerned. Just going to snatch and grab. I'm back in the car. So right now I'm gonna hit confirm pickup. It's gonna ask me to confirm there again, just to make sure that I didn't butt dial. So I'm gonna hit confirm one more time. And then from here, the screen is gonna change again. It's gonna go back to something that it looked like before when I was approaching the restaurant. So I'll be able to see the name of the customer, the address in which I'm going to, and then I'll have the communication icons for them to either be able to call or text. As you look up towards the top of the screen, you'll be able to see the blue dot. That's where you currently are, which should be at the restaurant and then the house which is where we're going right now. If we look up at the very top of the screen, again, it's gonna give you the time that the order should be delivered by. Right below the customer's address, this is gonna be very key vital information. This is gonna tell you whether this delivery is leave it at the door or whether it's hand to the customer. I'm gonna recommend that you just go ahead and take a glance at that before you even leave the restaurant so you can get into the mindset of what you're gonna to need to do once you actually get to the customer. Directly below that, again, is the name of the address. And if you hit the tab button, it will give you the items, the physical items that you were there to pick up for. And towards the bottom, you see, you will see I've arrived at the customer. This is very similar to the situation with arriving at the restaurant. If you haven't gotten there and you try to swipe it, it's going to give you a marker. For this one in particular, when you get to the customer, if you, I'm going to move this, the was messing me up if you try to mark this and the gps thing comes up if you mark yes it's going to actually ask you to contact customer service as opposed to just pushing it through so it's a little different from getting to the restaurant but something you need to keep in mind pro tip and this is not any type of tax advice legal advice financial advice i'm not certified i'm going to say that up front but after you pick up your first order from your first restaurant, you should start your tracker. Let it run until you drop off your last order with your last customer. Another pro tip or a key note that you should know. Whatever you use as far as your maps to guide you to the restaurant and the drop off, you can pre-select from the settings inside of the Dasher app. So from the home page, we're gonna hit the three bars in the top left-hand corner. We're gonna go to settings. And then from there, you can enable the widget, which you should do. You can pick dark mode or light mode. And then at the very top, you can select what your default mapping system is going to be. So if it's on Google and you like Waze or whatever the situation may be, it'll allow you to toggle from there. So I'm currently pulling up um, at the business right now to drop off the order. It is a leave it at the door order. All right, so I'm gonna, I'm here now. I'm gonna mark that I've arrived at the customer. It's gonna ask me if I wanna do the next steps. It's gonna ask me to take a picture. And then from there, I'm gone. Some guy walking out. Boom. When you take the picture, Try to get as much information as possible, as much detail in the background as possible, including the address. So they have the number on the door, on a column, on the top, wherever. If you can include that in the picture, CYA, my friends, CYA, and that's going to be the best way. But I got that dropped off. I got my picture taken. All right. And from there, it's going to ask me to rate my delivery. So if I had any type of bad problems, of course, I'm gonna hit the frown. It's gonna give me some more details and ask me exactly what made this a difficult experience. And then the same thing with the smiley face. So what made this a good experience, all right? 
not mandatory. So that is not mandatory that you select it and you can select the frowny face without going into more detail. So you don't have to feel like that you have to tell them or select one every time and you don't have to select one if you don't want to. If you do not hit complete delivery and then confirm from the experience screen, you're gonna be stuck. You're not gonna get another order. So you need to make sure that you hit confirm. You need to make sure that you follow all the way through until you get back to the very first screen that we were at, which will show you, should show you, your closest hotspot, where it is, and allow you to figure out which hotspot you're gonna to go to. That means that we're getting another order. All right, pop quiz. So as we look at this order right here, can you tell me the name of the restaurant? Can you tell me the total number of items that are gonna be picked up? And can you tell me the total number of miles that are gonna be driven for this order? All right, so can you tell me whether we are gonna accept this order or not? Eh -eh. We're not gonna take this order. It's too far and technically this isn't even, the drop off is not in my zone, which is a no, no. Not gonna take this order. So we're gonna hit the button in the top right hand corner that says decline. After you hit the decline button, it's gonna show you what your percentage is going to be after you drop this order. Right below that, it's gonna give you two options to either go back or decline. If you hit decline again, it's gonna ask you for a reason. You will have to select a reason before it will allow you to continue. If you select anything except the very last one, it's just a one and done. So if distance too far, it's gonna auto decline it and it's gonna take you back to the other screen. If you hit something else, it's going to ask you to put in some information. You don't have to just hit confirm again and boom. It's an extra step, but whatever. But that is how we decline orders.